I'm Tiffany Taylor for The Hollywood Reporter News, and the Emmy nominations voting window is right around the corner. It opens June 10th. So today, I'm sitting down with THR's awards columnist, Scott Feinberg, to talk all things Emmys. So let's talk about the comedy series category. Now, last year, only one broadcast network comedy was nominated. Blackish, but as recently as 2011, the entire comedy series category was all broadcast network shows. So, why has that changed so much over the past few years? You know, a big thing is the rise of the streaming services, which, along with pay cable networks, have become much more appealing places for TV creators who want to do edgy work in the most sort of artistically satisfying way possible. On broadcast networks, of course, you had to deal and continue to have to deal with commercial interruptions, which require exposition when you come back from them. You've had to deal with standards and practices, whereas on pay cable and streaming, you can say and show whatever you want. What you've seen is that the network comedies are feeling blander and blander. The others are more satisfying for people who want more, which include generally Emmy voters. And so you have really seen a pretty quick change in the landscape. If any broadcast shows could break through this year, which shows would they be? Well, like we were saying a moment ago, the only one that was nominated last year was Blackish from ABC, which would probably still have the best bet of any this year. Rick Fox? I know she didn't. There's an outside chance NBC could get in there with The Good Place, which hasn't been nominated in past seasons, but continues to kind of grow with each season and, and gain respect among critics. But, uh, you know, once you've fallen out or haven't made it in there and, and you've moved beyond your first season, it is hard to break back in. So there aren't that many options for, for a broadcast. It's really looking like we might be in for the first year in TV history when you won't have a single comedy series from a broadcast network among the finalists, which would be really a powerful moment. Is there any chance Modern Family could weasel its way back in there? You know, one for its first five seasons, which was enough to tie it with uh, Frasier for the all-time record, but it's been a few years, five years since its last win, and it certainly has not gotten better over those years. In fact, even by the final fourth or fifth win for it, people were beginning to throw their hands up and say, you know, this is ridiculous. There are edgier shows that are on TV. That's not to knock it because some of those edgy shows um, that we all look to now really probably wouldn't be possible without the edgiest network shows having paved the way. So, you know, Modern Family, when it was new and fresh, that kind of depiction of LGBTQ characters in a uh, in, in the way that they showed them, just sort of accepting of them, probably made it possible for you know, shows like Orange is the New Black or Transparent to exist on Netflix or Amazon, respectively. Blackish paved the way for a show like, I would say, Atlanta in the way that it frankly discussed race. And really, you could go back as far as just maybe a decade or so ago with Everybody Loves Raymond on CBS. You're looking at a, a crazy family, definitely Jewish family. There, there's no marvelous Mrs. Maisel without that on Amazon. So this is not to knock network shows, they just play by a different set of rules that are a little bit more restrictive. And in a way, it's silly to have them even competing at the Emmys with these other shows because it's it's like apples and oranges. Well, Scott, thank you so much for all your insight. As always, it'll be interesting to see if any broadcast comedies break through when the Emmy nominations are announced. And for much more on all things Emmys from Scott, you can check out his blog at THR.com slash The Race.